everyone, thanks for joining me for this week's faith practice. I don't know about you, but so often it seems like I run from thing to thing throughout the day and I don't realize how frenzied life is until the day is over. It's pretty difficult to notice where God is and how God's grace holds and guides us throughout the week, unless we pause. So I invite you to take a deep breath as we start. Hear God invite you to be still just for a moment and recognize God's presence is with you. In slowing down, we can notice our breath. We can feel the energy in our body. We can notice things that might have escaped us in all the busyness of the week. Take one more deep breath and let that busyness escape. And one of the consistent themes throughout Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is the connection Jesus makes between the well-being of our internal, or some might call it our spiritual life, and all other aspects of our lives. I wouldn't draw too fine a point on the difference between the two. We just know that Jesus cares deeply about both of them. It is the both and of loving God and loving our neighbor. And in Jesus' teaching this week, he tells us not to waste our time trying to impress others with with our faith. When what matters first is how our actions reflect our relationship with God. This week's reading comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 8 and 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others, Jesus says, in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Now truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. And do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Now truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When I was in fifth grade, I was playing with some friends outside my house when a few girls from my class came by. I was in that embarrassingly awkward phase when girls were a complete mystery, but something in my pre-adolescent brain told me that I should do something to impress them. I happened to have a pencil in my hand and without thinking, I tried to throw the pencil as far as I could, imagining that that it would stretch an arch over the house on the other side of the street. I thought I'd show them just how strong I was. 
The problem was the pencil slipped out of my hand just as the momentum was going forward and it landed right in the cutest girl's lip. Let's just say there was no reward from anyone for trying to show off that day. But that's not always the case in our society, right? We love celebrities and social media influencers. We reward people with our clicks and our likes and feel gratified when others click and like our stuff too. There's something inside us that admires those who stick their neck out and do things that we don't dare do. Now, thankfully, that's not what Jesus expects of us when it comes to following him. He's not looking for us to impress others with our mighty acts of faith. He doesn't need us to pray with fancy words or expect us to show off how deeply religious we are in public. What Jesus is interested in is our heart. He calls us to align our inner life with our outward life, to deepen our trust in God's goodness and grace and love in our lives, to let down our guard, to take off the masks, and to set aside our pretenses that serve as barriers to whole living. When we do this, it naturally gets reflected in our relationships with others. Jesus tells us to make faith practices like prayer and generosity such a part of our lives that they are just a part of who we are. No masks, no pretenses. By doing this, the rhythms of our lives remind us of our deep dependence on God's gracious providing, always. The, re the reward for this isn't a ticket to heaven for being good. That's already been secured through Jesus' death on the cross. Rather, the reward is a sense of wholeness in life and oneness with God and knowing where our treasure truly is so that our heart is there too. Now for this week's practice, I invite you to think about some of the barriers you rely on that keep you less than whole in your relationships. What are the masks you wear? Maybe it's fear of not knowing something or pride that keeps you from being emotionally, spiritually available to others. I invite you to write that down and then tell God plainly, simply, what it is, and then ask God to help make you whole, to let go of that thing. That's the practice for this week. Let's pray together. God assures that we don't have to use fancy words to pray to you, to find wholeness in you, and remind us that every act of generosity us place our treasure in you. Amen. Friends, we'll see you this weekend, this weekend in worship.